Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Charming Data. I hope you had a wonderful week and got some good practice building dashboard apps in Python. So in this tutorial this week, um, we're going to continue learning all about Dash Cytoscape. As a reminder, Dash Cytoscape is a way to build, <clears throat> is a component that allows you to build networks. Look at this network right here of the 9-11 uh, hijackers as a social network and their connections. You can, uh, you can build networks with um, information networks or uh, paper citation networks, biological networks, um, networks of language contribution in Wikipedia. I really like this image. Um, so all of this is something that you can do with Dash, specifically Dash Cytoscape. All right. In this, a week ago, we learned about basic usage and elements chapter. <clears throat> In this tutorial, we're going to focus on three other chapters. We're going to um, see the reference chapter down here, so we'll see more parameters of Cytoscape. We're going to look into the different layouts that you can create with Dash Cytoscape, like this one, um, um, many different layouts, all the layouts that you have here. And we're going to look into the user interaction chapter that will give you a lot more power or the um, uh, type of networks that you can build and how you can connect them to the graphs that you want to connect them. So it's a really cool um, tutorial. You have a lot to learn. Um, so I hope you enjoy. As always, um, I'm going to put my uh, link to the GitHub repository under the video. So to follow along <clears throat> or just to play around with the code on your own, go into the Cytoscape um, file folder. And then if you have Jupyter Dash, Jupyter Lab, I made this file for you. Um, download the layout user interactivity. We're going to do this one today. If you're using uh, PyCharm, uh, Spider, Visual Studios, then download the .py file, and you can use that um, to create this, um, this dashboard. Um, as a quick note, um, this is completely free, this repository. I'd recommend uh, you look over it, you use it uh, to learn Dash Plotly. Um, if you'd like to um, support this repository or support the education I'm giving you um, in uh, data analytic apps with Python and with Dash, uh, I'd be grateful if you can click on the link above and consider um, supporting uh, me and my channel. Thank you. All right, so let's get started. Let's learn all this together. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to assume you download the information, you download um, the, the, the Python file, and you have this up and running. So let's look into um, the references. Okay, let's go into the code. I'm going to move this aside, and we're going to look into the references chapter. The references chapter um, has a few parameters. Let's start with the code first. In case you missed last week, uh, make sure to download um, all these libraries. Specifically, you'll need to install uh, Pandas and Dash and Cytoscape if you don't have them for this code to work. And then um, we start the app here. We're reading the uh, a fake CSV document that I created from GitHub on GitHub. And then I have um, the drop down here. Um, if you don't really know what I'm doing here, click on the link above. You can learn all about the drop down if you want. But I'm not going to go over it right now, so I don't waste um, waste time on that. And then we're going to call Cytoscape. So then we're going to, uh, oops. Then we're going to open Cytoscape, and we're going to give it an ID that we're going to use in the callback. And here are a few parameters. Look at this parameters here. Here we have auto um, auto ungrabify. It, it, this is false right now, which means I can grab all the um, all the nodes here and I can move them around. If I put this to true and I save it and I run it, what will happen is that I won't be able to grab them. You'll see, I'll be able to select them. They're actually selected, but I won't be able to grab them and do anything with them. So this is where where is it right here? This is one of the parameters that exists within the Cytoscape reference um, uh, web page. And this is also under the video, so make sure to go there if you want. Um, and here you have all the different parameters. And this is what I would recommend. Practice. Practice these parameters. I chose auto on Grabify because I read this and this is what I saw, it, what it meant, and it was interesting for me. The other thing that was interesting for me was the min zoom, right? Min zoom and max zoom. If you read more into the references here, go to MMM, min zoom, max zoom. It'll tell you how much you can minim, uh, uh, um, how much you can zoom in or zoom out as a user. So I'm here with my mouse, and I put min zoom 0.2 and max zoom 1. So if I try and zoom out, 
this is the minimum zoom, right? If I didn't put this, this I could really zoom out a lot more until this disappears. But I put 0 0.2, so I can't do more. And zoom in, I can't do more than this. I'm, I'm trying to move my mouse, but I can't do more than one, which is the viewport. So <clears throat> you can play around with min zoom, max zoom um, to give more um, limitations to the user. But, but what I'm trying to say is that uh, there's a lot of different parameters here inside the, um, the references, and it's important um, that, that you know uh, most of them because it really gives you a lot of power over the type of network that you can create. Um, don't worry, we're going to jump into a lot more of these parameters at the end when we go over the chapter of user interactions. All right, so let's go into the chapter of... Um, layouts. Now we're going to tackle the layouts chapter. So the layouts, that cytoscape gives you um, the capability to um, choose different layouts that are already like automated for you. So you don't have to decide where you want to put each node. If you saw last video, um, we used the preset um, uh, layout and preset layout means that we have to we have to actually um, um, assign the position of each node the x and y position of each node and um, and and it's doable and it's flexible and it's great but the problem is that if you have a lot of nodes um, then there's there's just a lot of a lot of coding right if your network is really really big oh let me put this in false one second um, Let's change this. Okay, so like I was saying, uh, the layout, if you have a lot of nodes, then it's really a headache and there's a lot of code if you want to do the, the preset um, function of the layout. So the other layouts here that we're going to cover, the other layouts are random, for example. Let's put here random and see what happens. Oh, we don't even have, we don't even have to change it. We have the uh, right here. We'll put random. Make this a little bit bigger. Okay, when you do random, you see just completely random. We'll change it to grid. I'll put it to random again, and you see that it's completely random. If we do um, um, circle, then it tries to do like a circle of our nodes. Um, we can do codes, which I can't remember what what it means, but this is usually how it looks like. And concentric, also, um, this is um, always looks like a concentric, right? The code sometimes changes. You can read more about it under the references and the layout section to understand what each one of them means. And then you have grid, um, and then you have uh, breadth, breadth first, and you have, um, uh, it usually gives you the root. So let's go into it a little bit more. Let's look into the code here. Let's move this aside. All right, so as you can see here, we have we, we chose all the different uh, layout options through the drop down, um, but there's a few more things you can do with, with with some of these options. For example, the circle. Let's let's hashtag this out, and let's put the layout here like this. And I'm actually going to cancel the drop down so it doesn't bother us. Cancel this drop down. I want to cancel the drop down callback so it doesn't really get in the way. Where is the drop down call? There we go. We'll go over this later. So, right now, I chose the layout circle, but I also chose to give it a radius, a start angle, and a sweep. Don't ask me what this means because I have no idea. <laughs> But it, it does allow you, and it has a, an example on layout section, it does allow you to create um, semicircles or, or different types of, of circles with your, um, with your network. Uh, you have to, to do this, you have to uh, import math for this to work. All right? So this is just a few more capabilities with the circle, if you want to uh, play around with it. Then we have the grid layout. Grid is the same thing. It gives you more capabilities in a sense that you can build, you can you can tell it, where is it? You can say how many rows you want and how many columns. So because I saw, I chose two rows and four columns, this is how, where is it? Um, let's do it again. Oops, run it. Okay. So now you see I have two rows and four columns. One, two, three, four columns. Probably not the best choice. I could probably do like two rows and maybe three columns would make it look a little bit better. Um, save this and run it again. 
And now we'll see that we um, changed the grid a little bit. Two rows and three columns, and now it looks better. So again, a quicker way of controlling your, your, uh, your layout of the network. Another um, capability is breadth first. And if you choose breadth first, uh, you can also decide what the root is. Right? I'm saying the root is going to be the ID of Executive Director Harriet, which is the first um, node. So now if I run it, you'll see that it's like a tree. It actually builds like a tree network. So the top is Executive Director, and then Vice President, Vice President, and then under them, um, the, the, the other staff members. So this is, a, this is what you can do with um, the breadth. Um, let's hi hi highlight this out. And that, and and then the, like I showed you before, there's concentric, and then there's codes. There are other external layouts that Dash offers, and you'll see here under layouts, all the way at the bottom, you'll see external external layouts, right? All these these options. Um, if you do choose external layouts, you have to do this hashtag this out. And and then just change it. There's like you see, there's a few options here. Let's use spread. I'm going to put spread here. Where is spread? 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 Let's do here. And let's do spread. Okay. And this is how um, spread looks like. It gives. It's almost random. As I think it's random because this will change. But it's like a spread type of layout using a type of algorithm from. Um, from a different library. Um, just keep in mind that it, it, it is um, a bit heavy, they say. It's a bit, um, it's a heavy load on the, on the dashboard. So if you really don't um, need this extra layout, I would recommend not to use it because it might slow your dashboard down. Okay, let's move this back to um, breath first. All right, I'm gonna activate the dropdown. So we can change the different layouts if we want. I'm going to activate here the callback for the dropdown um, in a second. Okay, and I also did. I also wanted to show you there's animate true, um, <clears throat> animate true here, animate true. This is a parameter inside the um, um, uh, this callback that allows you to animate when you're using dropdowns. So you see how if I go to grid. It's, and it's, it's not changing at once. Um, the layout changes via animation, so it slowly changes from one layout to another, which is really, really cool. Okay, so now that we did the, um, the layout section, um, yeah, we're going to go into the user interaction. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me under the YouTube video, and I'll try to help as much as I can. So the user interaction just shows us um, different ways of using uh, all the different parameters um, uh, of the uh, cytoscape. And these parameters that you're going to see here in the code right here, um, tap select no data, tap no data, all these give you a lot more information and data on what the user is doing with your network. So then you can actually um, create, uh, connect this to more graphs, connect it to a dash data table, and do a lot more with it because you have a lot of data on what is happening. So let's look at, at all this, all this data that it's offering us. So here we're going to we're going to go over the mouse node data, the mouse over edge data, tap tap node, and select node data. All right, let me move this aside so you can see what's happening here. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take all this inside the callback, right, in the, as an input of the network, and I'm just going to um, print it out right here inside the callback function so we can see it in Jupyter Dash. And here I'm just returning like a, an empty sentence. You'll see this sentence right here. I'm just returning it inside a normal div just because I, I was bored and didn't really have anything to do. But the main um, thing you should we should focus on right now is what we're printing out, okay? So let's see. The, these are the different parameters. Mouse over no data means pretty much what it says. Whenever a mouse hovers over a node, then you'll see um, you'll see uh, data um, that pops up. So let's look. Let's run this anew, and then we're going to go all the way to the bottom. There we go. So you see how it says here none, 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 none. These are the five things that I'm printing, right? All these things that I'm printing. One, two, three, four, five. So everything is none because I, I didn't do anything yet. This is the dashboard was just refreshed. But if I hover over Executive Director Harriet, 
you see how suddenly we have this mouse on node. So it's going to give me the ID and the label of this node. An ID of the label of this node is the same because that's how I built it. It doesn't have to be the same. It could be the same, but I built it right here. Um, I took it from the, the, the data frame from the Excel sheet and I made the ID and the label the same X, X, and this in this for loop. All right. So this was in mouse on node, um, you see. Now let's do um, mouse on edge. The edge is the line, that, the link that connect between nodes right here. See, so I didn't even click on it. I just moved my mouse. And now you can see that the source is the executive director and, uh, um, and the target is vice president Charlotte because that's how the link works. Where it starts is the source and where it ends is the target. And then it created um, an ID for it, an automatic ID for it. Now I'm going to actually tap on it. So if you want data of hover, you use you use these two. For data hover is just this. But if you want data of, of the user when he when they click on something, then you use either um, tap node or tap edge, right? So let's see right here. I'm going to do tap node on Vice President Charlotte. I tapped on the node. So you can see here, tap node. Vice President Charlotte with the same label because we did the same label on ID and we still have a mouse on node because obviously I also hovered over Charlotte. So I hovered and I tapped. Now let's see, um, Ellen, let's go into here. Um, let's go into Ellen and I'm gonna, uh, no, on the edge and I'm gonna tap on the edge between Charlotte and Ellen. So if we go down here, you'll see tapped edge Vice President Charlotte was a source, and the target was pro, uh, Program Associate Ellen. So this is really cool because it gives you a lot of information, a lot of data on what the user is doing with your network, and you can create a whole bunch of things with it, with the callback, um, data tables, graphs, um, and other networks just based on user interaction. The last thing is all selected nodes. This is an empty list because Right now, all selected nodes is we're using the selected node data parameter. So um, uh, it actually creates a lift of everything that was selected. So if I go, right now it's empty. But if I go and I click on Ellen, and then I, I hit Shift, and I click on Charlotte, and then Harriet, you'll see that now the all selected nodes is a list of dictionaries. And each dictionary represents a node, Ellen. Charlotte and Executive Director Harriet. So this is really cool because again, you can you can say uh, build a graph with all these uh, selected nodes um, that the user the user selected with their mouse or with their um, a mobile um, index finger. So there you have it. Um, if you want to learn more about the um, um, how I connected the network on the Cytoscape to um, the graph with with the different colors that are generated is in this callback. I'm going to my first video last week about um, uh, Dash Cytoscape, and I talk about it there. Um, I hope you join me next week, because next week I'm going to go over the styling uh, chapter of Cytoscape, which will allow us to style the nodes and the edges any way we want using style sheet and CSS. Also very interesting information. Um, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining. Um, uh, thank you for uh, accompanying me and, and, and watching my channel. Um, always remember, we're better together, so help each other out. Um, never give up and keep practicing. Until next time.